you are the big winner. What do you think about the team that the Likud is presenting now in the elections? Well, I won't surprise you if I would say that the Likud and, and the, I would say the State of Israel uh, are the great winners of the Likud primary elections mm -hmm. because uh, one, can't, uh, one can't deny the fact that we have a very attractive list. The mistakes of the last elections were taken into consideration because I remember that <clears throat> while campaigning in every Likud branch and in every meeting, I would say one thing I don't want to hear. This is an, an unre unrealistic slot. Mm -hmm. Because we learned the hard way that we never know in advance. So I said our task is to make sure that at least the first 40 slots, if not more, are people whom, and I remember what I said to Likud the members, I said you have to close your eyes and imagine them being members of Knesset, working in the committees, addressing the plenary session, passing laws, legislation. This is something that you have to think about everyone you are voting for. And now we have a list of at least 40-something first numbers, or the, the uh, list members who definitely can be members of Knesset. I have no doubt that the first 2025 can easily tomorrow take any ministerial position and uh, perform their job well. So this is something that we have to keep in mind. That. Uh, I know it sounds a little bit dull sometimes, but there is nothing like experience, and there are no shortcuts. And uh, each time it looks strange to me that people imagine that after they were doing something, in some cases even successfully, the next thing they can do is uh, to become Prime Minister of the State of Israel without even voting once in the Knesset, without uh, having any uh, ministerial experience, without reading even once the state budget and the trying to analyze the state budget. So uh, I think that this is the main difference of uh, Likud. We have an experienced team headed obviously by Benjamin Netanyahu and uh, now we have a very good chance of, uh, of winning the elections. We have to work very hard, but at least I know that citizens won't be disappointed the day after the elections. The issue of populism, I guess we could call it, in the Likud. People talked about how it disappeared. Really, I think there was one person that disappeared, and we still have a lot of people who their style is to shout a lot and use name-calling and things like that, and they're still in, in pretty realistic spots. Do you think that something needs to be changed, or do you think that that's just a part of the, the, the party, part of the atmosphere? I heard from many people after the Likud primary elections that these primary elections gave them hope or brought, the, brought, brought back their hope. And uh, I beg to disagree. I think that the message is quite clear. It's not about one person. It's not about me taking first slot. Because one may say, okay, yeah, that's true that he behaves the way he behaves, but he, probably he's a very shrewd political operator or he had a very good team, uh, which is true. I had a very good team. And, and that's what brought him to the first slot. And it's not about uh, Mr. Hazan who was uh, thrown away after all the gimmicks and all the, the uh, misbehavior here in the Knesset. It's a clear message. I think that we can't find any other explanation for the fact that hardworking MKs moved forward. Uh, and even if you take less realistic slots, you know, you look at the... Uh, uh, some MKs, and no one gave them a chance. And all of a sudden, they find themselves, you know, better positioned than some of the, of the shouters and, uh, and the winners of the shouting matches here in the Knesset. So, so I think that, that uh, this is a clear message, and I sincerely hope... By the way, it's not I sincerely hope. If you look at the list of the labor, we can uh, more or less come to the same conclusion. Hard-working MKs were promoted to... to I don't know what is realistic in labor, but let's say to the top 10 there, okay? And even to the first slots. And, uh, and uh, this is, I think, probably some change of mood, a change of attitude among the Israelis. They are a little bit sick and tired of all the, uh, as we said, shouting matches and gimmicks and all the unnecessary things.